Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Rinzi's Ultimate Decades Challenge. We are currently at the very beginning of 1327. A lot of stuff happened last episode. We pretty much spent time with everyone. It was Christmas. Joan didn't get to spend it with her kids unfortunately. The Rolfs spent it at the Wheeled household and had a nice little time. We had a few birthdays. Talia and Sophie are okay. Tobias aged up as well. And Margaret met her betrothed, who ever, pretty much all of you guessed it would be Leo. So now we've got that to worry about. And George wants to marry Melissa, but he'll have to talk to Philip first. And as far as the royals are concerned, relations between Willow Creek and Winnenberg are still very tense. But there's been sort of a stalemate at the moment over the Glimmerbrook issue. Cassian and Laurent are willing to try negotiations again. Laurent asked Cassian to come to Willow Creek, but Josephine advised against it because he is the king and why are you going to do that? Why are you going to risk it? Laurent said, that's fine. Have your heir come and seal these negotiations. And Josephine again told Cassian that's a bad idea because Gavin is his heir. So being that Joan is the sister of the king of, the, of Willow Creek, they think thought that ha sending her to negotiate on Cassian's behalf might be beneficial. So that is where we left off and that is where we are currently starting off. You know, the general idea is they're trying to prevent an all-out war here, even though Laurent is not happy with Cassian's BS currently. Joan definitely took this as a chance to get away from him. She unfortunately doesn't have a lot of say in what she does with her own children. So she was unable to take them with her. I'm sure she wanted to very badly, but she can't just whisk the air away without explicit permission. That would cause a whole, a whole other can of worms. And currently Joan is on thin ice as a Willow Creek native. So being that Windenburg is her home um, and that her children are there, Joan, I think is playing her cards very carefully. She's not trying trying to encourage a war at this time. She doesn't actually want to risk that. And it has less to do with Cassian and more to do with the implications of war and what that brings. And also this is her family and she's the queen of Windenburg. Even if Cassian has her under house arrest, that could cause some issues. So I'd say she's been in Willow Creek about a month or so maybe. She's been sort of working on calming Laurent down during the stalemate and you know just spending some time with the family, spending some time as family rather than two opposing royals and Lauren and Joan have always gotten along, so I think he does have a soft spot for her in spite of everything. He does know about her marital issues, I think, but he doesn't know how deep they go. And, and I think with the threats that Cassian tossed at her when she found him trying to revive Emma, she's not going to mention that whole bit because anything that might risk her losing her children for good, she's not going to, she's just not going to risk it. So for now, I'll just leave Joan and Laurent here while they work on those negotiations and I'll come back to them in this episode to see where that leaves them. Okay, we are back at the Rolf farm. It is a snowy day. We are still at the height of winter and just one day away from Twelfth Night and two days away from the winter harvest. I am waiting for James to come back from work in order to have them go over to Melissa's place so that they can talk to Philip about the marriage arrangements. And then we and Matilda just disappeared because I had her go foraging. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna let's see. If, and I've got Jonathan hunting. We've got little James working on the farm. Let's have him clean this coop. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a sales table out here so Margaret can try to sell some stuff. Let's have her maybe make a flower arrangement. She does have daisies. She could do that. And I feel like uh, now that she has a potential noble family that she's marrying into. She's kind of been advised to just lay low, so she's not going to the Marketplace Tavern for market days anytime soon. Little James, what are you doing? Why won't you, um, just, this chicken wants to fight him. 
Just to get along with the chickadees. Just be good. Don't be chaotic. Matilda's back from foraging. Okay, we got some carrots, some cherries, and some seeds. Awesome. And I'll have Margaret go and stock this table. And uh, I think I am going to go ahead and purchase another shed. James and Margaret have a difficult dynamic. James, why? What are you doing? Why are you like this? You were such a sweet boy. Parenting, discipline. Ex He's being mean to her. Oh, Miriam's coming to support our business. And Orla. Oh, I love seeing the gals here. Okay, we're making bank here. They really want those bugs. <gasps> Philip. No, Philip, come back. George. George, wake up. Go talk to Philip. Go have a deep conversation with him. Hello, Philip. It's so nice to see you. Ooh, Auntie Capet is here. Oh, no, Philip is leaving. <gasps> Maybe he knows that Melissa has been flirting with George and he's just like, I don't want to deal with this right now. Okay, there's so much happening right now. There's so much. We've got some uh, nobles here. Here's Sir Butterfield. Uh, I think I gave him a name. His name's Hugo. Yep, I gave him a name. You know, I'm going to pretend that the Earl did not actually come here because that is not drama. There's already so much drama. I'm not going to add to it. <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. Oh, and Jonathan's back from hunting. Got some squirrels. Okay, so we've got some fabric. Let's go. Let's stock. Go on, sir. Buy something, please. Give us some money. <gasps> Philip came back. Matilda, why don't you go? Let's try this again. Let's go. No, he left. George can pickpocket some people. The king! Cassian, if you're not going to give me money, you can leave. Oh my god, George, pickpocket the king. <laughs> Pick, do it. Oh, he can't. Oh, there's Grandmama looking exhausted. And there's Amelia. Cassian, go away. I need to make money. James, tell Cassian to go away. He's like, I'm just going to ignore this guy. Is it <gasps> Philip is here? Did he come to... Philip, are you going to be here or not? Because we need to talk. Yeah, I'm just going to have him come back. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of these games. Oh, uh, there's Matilda trying to talk to Margaret. And Margaret's like, I don't want to talk to you right now, mother. Matilda, why don't you call to me? Yeah, I'm just going to have Philip come. I'm going to have him... I'm going to... He came... So I'm going to have him stay. Mother, stop talking to me. I'm trying to sell things. Matilda, come say hello to Philip. Let's enthuse about our children together. George, come shake the hand of your beloved's father. Sir Butterfield, please buy my wares. Compliment. Give him, give him props, perhaps? Oh my god. Margaret's making bank. <gasps> we sold almost everything. Harwin, please buy this lone roll of fabric, please. Okay, so we've got the men here. They're trying to have a nice little conversation. Let's gossip about our neighbors, kind of like segue into a fun little talk. Why don't we? And George is probably going to be like, it's so nice to see you, sir. Let's have a deep conversation. Oh, no. Whatever happened, you didn't like that. Okay, Margaret has sold everything, and we need to pay the bills. Please, everyone, get out. James, why are you so grumpy? Oh, he has high blood pressure, and he definitely needs a vacation. Can you not be grumpy? Like, this is crucial. Um, but it looks like Philip is being pleasant, and I think Philip has taken notice, like, that, oh, I see Melissa has been coming here a lot. And James! James! I swear, James. I swear. Let's discipline for shouting forbidden words. And then, uh, just M Matilda, come discipline your child. But they're having a nice little conversation. I feel like Philip was, uh, was like, you know, I've taken notice that Melissa has been coming around here a lot. I know you guys have known each other since you were children. And George is like, I'm glad you've uh, taken notice because we have known each other since we were children and we've always, you know. Oh my God, Jonathan was mauled by a bear. Oh my God, so much is happening. John. Oh, he was hunting and he was 
I'm gonna have to give him scars, I think. I'll take care of that in a second, but oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, John. Whew, okay. So yeah, uh, Philip is just talking to the men. James, I'm gonna have you go to bed as well so that you're not shouting bad words. Poor John, oh my God, he's so traumatized. But it looks like the conversation is pretty okay right now. James is feeling a little better. And he's like, you know, I, I we think Melissa is so swell and George has truly taken a liking to her. And we wanted to ask your permission if you would allow George. No, don't leave. Philip is walking away. He has left the building. He's like, you know what? I think he saw where the conversation was going and he's like, I have to excuse myself. Goodbye. I'm not going to force him to talk. Uh, we will, we will go over to his house in the next sim day. George, you are tired. Go to bed. It is late. James, you tried your best. I think you did a great job. Let's go to bed and start again tomorrow. That got a bit, that got a little bit chaotic. What I will do, however, is, uh, s give poor Jonathan some scars because he got mauled by a freaking bear. Let's see. I gave Leoric a chest scar because he was mauled. Uh, maybe we'll give him, give him an arm scar. Maybe he, like, pulled his arm up to try to, like, defend himself. I don't know why I'm trying to get accurate about it. But, yeah, he probably put his arm up. His face is probably okay. But maybe he sustained a scratch across his chest. Uh, maybe he got a little scritchy scratch on the face before narrowly escaping. So maybe just like a little one right down there. But he's alive. He is well. Our boy is handsome. He's very handsome. We love him. But yeah, he got mauled by a freaking bear, dude. This is why uh, I don't send the heirs uh, hunting. I'm pretty sure they don't die from hunting um, if they get attacked by a bear, but still. But you know, it's just going to add character. Okay, everyone go to bed. Go to sleep. Margaret made some money. And ugh, God, it's so hard to do this when there's snow all over the place. But let me just expand this a bit. Yeah, the farm is looking farmy. And then we'll add a cow shed or a shed. Okay, there you go. I could still use the free range cows, but um, I get more options with the shed, I believe. And I will be adding more to the farm very soon. It is, ooh, we have a blizzard. But let me purchase an, I want a Highland cow. Let's get this Highland cow right here. I can also get a goat and goat milk, but I want a cow. And we now have a Highland cow. So happy. It is early morning. We need to clean Teddy's little habitat. John, you have rested. Okay, I want to use the bathroom. And come clean for Teddy's sheddy. And go feed the chickens. Let's go rise and shine. So I think I'm going to do, I'm going to give the stairs some cover. I'm going to move the kitchen maybe to another spot over here and give them more space here. James, are you awake? Go get some, a little more sleep, okay? I'm so sorry you got mauled by a bear, John. My poor boy. My poor little John. Okay. I'm so devastated for him. I see Josephine and Cassian. Let's have our boy john go pickpocket josephine if he can he's a little he's been a little twitchy is that from being mauled i don't know esther esther's in labor she had what i guess she's in i guess she was pregnant let me just name this cow really quick bluebell that's sweet okay so i had no idea that esther was with child as to with whose child um it's probably joffrey's but still <laughs> ah geez there is um it really writes itself don't it but let's um take a break and make our way over there okay esther 
Esther, you're so pregnant. Okay. Wow. All right. We've got the babies just playing over here. Okay. Let's let's go have this baby. Oh, and these boys are so cute. And there's Gavin with his sister. It's a boy. Let's name it Joffrey. Uh, who are your parents, Joffrey? Oh, and he's her whole heart. Unwanted child. Oh, geez. Maybe he's sus. Maybe he thinks it's Cassian's. But since, I don't know. I don't know how this will work out because if she's still, if she's still having affairs with Cassian, there's no telling who this child's father would be. Um, I'm sure she's naming it Joffrey as a courtesy. It's clearly Joffrey's son, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how. Uh, wow. Okay. And uh, we'll age him up. Uh, I'll probably age him up off screen, but um, let's hope this baby has blonde hair. <laughs> let's go back. Okay, so so we are back with George because I wanted to have him come visit Philip, but uh, I discovered something upon visiting, and that is that Philip and Jaquetta had another freaking baby. You guys. You're, you're like about to kick the bucket. Where's Jaquetta? She is somewhere. I'm, I'm just in awe here. I, they had a baby. They named it Lonnie. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. They, they had a baby. They had a whole ass baby. Oh, it's a boy. So they had a son, another son. I'm, I'm seriously guys seriously seriously who's gonna take care of the kid when you're gone huh that's very irresponsible oh geez okay i'm gonna i'm gonna george come say hi uh be thankful he came all this way where's okay melissa's over here missing her torso i'm gonna get have her go inside maybe she's just uh anxious looking out the window Trying to see what's happening. Go on, buddy. Go greet Philip. Hello. And Philip is like, hello, Brian. Go mind your business. Go, go sit. Nope. Melissa came out to play with the snow. All right. Uh, so I feel like George is like, I couldn't help but notice you just walked away yesterday. I understand. And I think he, Philip, Philip, stop. Stop. Stop running away from your problems. Come, come talk to George, please. I'm begging you. Uh, why don't you share the Twelfth Night Spirit? This boy is doing the most. So he has come to be like, Sir, I think I love your daughter. Okay? I feel like Philip saw this coming. I feel like he's like, Listen, I am very protective over my daughter. I once had another daughter who was actually married to your uncle, I'm sure you've heard. <laughs> and we lost her. I feel like George is like, I'm well aware of what happened and it's unfortunate and it's sad. And sometimes life comes at us fast and things are out of our control and it's sad, but we just have to take it as it is and we can't keep living in fear. Because if we just keep living in fear, then life is just going to pass us by. And next thing we know, you're on your deathbed and your daughter resents you and she's unhappy. I don't think he's going to like be that savage about it. Oh, Philip likes whatever he's hearing. Um, but I feel like, you know, J George is going to be very blunt about it. And he's going to be like... It's, it's sad, but sometimes sad things happen. You know, we lost a lot of people during the famine, but that didn't stop us from living on. And so I love your daughter. And I think that, I think that's the first time George acknowledges the L word. He's like, I have these, I, I have so much love for Melissa and she's a very good friend of mine on top of everything. And I would love to live my life with her because I am at that age and I need to get married for this challenge. <laughs> and so I would like your permission to marry her. I asked her if she would let me court her, but I don't think it would be respectful to just elope. I want you guys to be a part of our lives. You have been a part of our lives 
since before I was born and I would like you to continue being part of our lives and you know possibly mend your relationship with your daughter and philip seems to be he's a friendly guy i feel like he's just very fearful and i feel like philip yep there's a thumbs up he is giving his blessing and so you know now that i think about it uh jaquetta and philip are way too old to be having babies because their daughter married one of our founders so this doesn't make sense i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna delete the baby i'm <laughs> I'm sorry, Lonnie. It just, you don't make sense right now. But I'm, I'm letting them, you know, if, if Beatrice is still alive, whatever. You know, they're, they're, they're exceeding expectations with their life expectancy. But whatever. I'm going to have George come over. I'm going to have him reluctantly profess his undying love. George, what are you doing? Go profess your undying love. Oh my God. The dog is expecting puppies. I, I can't with this family. They're just growing and growing. So here we go. They're just like, I, I'm, I'm not the most romantic person, but I do know that these fluttery feelings that I get mean that I love you and your father agreed. And so I would like to marry you. And she said, yes. And he said, awesome. Let's get married now. Oh my God. Elric and James are back there. Okay. Uh, just, uh, Probably uh, watching what's happened here. But look at the love in his eyes. Look at he's like, I, I love this girl so much. And then he's like, you know what? Let's get married right now because Rinzi needs us to start stockpiling kids for the next generation. <laughs> and you know, why won't you be the one to go ahead and kiss her? Just kiss her already. Gosh darn it. Oh my God, he kissed her. Okay. Give her a passionate kiss. This is the most rom most passionate he's ever been. And it, it's not an awkward encounter either. James and Matilda are hosting an impromptu wedding for their baby. And here's the entire gang gathered to watch George get married to his love. And everyone made it. Uh, the little ones, oh my god gosh look at sophie and cat in matching dresses i can't and talia here george also invited pierre who i do not see here oh oh just kidding pierre is here awesome and just look at the whole family philip has a habit of sitting on the floor at weddings pierre respectfully you're in the way thank you take your seat and here they are wait where are you guys going? Can y'all? Can y'all? Oh, God. Melissa, I, I honestly cannot stand having weddings. Melissa, please get out of your skivvies and into your wedding dress again. And now George is trying to... Oh, my God. Guys, I just need you for two seconds. That's, I can't. I can't. The family is waiting patiently as they do God knows what. All right. It is evening. Let's get the show on the road. Let's get married. Okay. So I previously had this setting where, wait, are they married? Renew vows. I am so confused. <laughs> They're married. Okay. I did not witness that. All right. Um, they got married incognito. I, I can't. G g well give her a kiss okay well as usual this game gets very weird with weddings okay well that was kind of a bust but it's fine i guess they're officially married george can you please come it looks like pierre's talking to gwen talia talia why why oh my god for frick's sake george just come kiss your new wife that's all i want philip's so sad he's very sad right now We've got Pierre and Gwen high-fiving each other over here. Kiss your wife. Okay, Pierre. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Look at Philip. Oh my God. Okay. He's, all right. All right. Whatever. We did it. We're married. We're done. <laughs> I can't. This is... I can't. I can't with the weddings. Okay, so we're, we're going to have Melissa move in. Okay, I'm just going to have to do it in the cheat way. Household add to family okay so she is now part of our family and because he is the heir he automatically gets a 2500 
simoleon dowry oops i i accidentally removed the money they already had i think they had about 1300 so that's like 3800 ish i don't know it's a rough estimate so melissa is now part of the family we're ending this wedding ceremony i'm done i am done also there's something i wanted to check okay with pierre i was gonna make a decision based on who he thought was more attractive um my pros originally i wanted pierre to marry emmeline because they were childhood friends and they really got along but since obviously that's not an option anymore i was gonna have him either marry gwen or talia depending on who he finds more attractive because i do have another prospect and depending on how this goes i might have the other marry the other person i have in mind uh so i had him talk to both gwen and talia but he we don't have an opinion on talia just yet while well, she is in her skivvies so why don't you discuss interest just get to know her a little more he was high-fiving gwen though like uh, they seem to really get along compliments give give her props as well the fam is leaving <laughs> no wait talia don't leave <laughs> Talia! Talia, don't leave yet. Pierre, don't leave yet. Don't say goodbye. I need you to. These sims are out of control today. Okay, just, uh, Talia, I need you to get dressed real quick. This is, this is very inappropriate. Just, I just need to know what Pierre thinks about you. Oh, and Gwen left. Oh my god, he thinks she's extremely attractive. Okay, uh, let's see if he thinks Gwen looks basic. So, oh my God, he likes that she's smart. Okay, he said, you've got brains and you're hot. Oh my God, and they immediately connected. Okay, that's good. That's very good. So that, that handles that. Pierre, you can go home. So it looks like I'm going to pair, I'm going to pair Pierre and Talia, and then I'm going to pair Gwyneth with the other person I had in mind. Okay, George now has his wife. Oh, she's out here talking to Jonathan. Jonathan's like, uh, my brother's lame, but I'm glad you're in the, f you're part of the family now. Okay. This was a mixed bag of emotions, guys. <laughs> so let me just add to the farm a bit. It's a little late. Okay, so I might fix this up a little better in a, in a bit, but I've gone ahead and added a little hallway. I put all the kitchen stuff here and then added a little room for George and his wifey. Um, so yeah, they are coming up. This is a big house. <laughs> so I'm gonna have George and Melissa have their wedding night. Let's go, guys. Go have your woohoo. James is very excited about watching that wedding, that that mess of a wedding. Oh, James, come fix this. Okay, there we go. And we will see if this results in the next generation. James and John are being jokesters. That's very, very cute. Mat Matilda! Seriously? It's your son's wedding night and you're just going to walk in like that? nauseated from privacy violation well whose fault is that matilda whose fault is that okay so melissa and george have had their wedding night and we will see how that goes i kind of just built everything in a rush but i'll see how i can make it a little better i guess i might actually just move the stairs inward just so the house isn't too big but i don't know it's not impossible for the house to start like growing over the years and it looks like the snow is clearing up as we approach the end of winter it's the next morning and we've got james here oh my god he's still wearing that fine clothing melissa says me i think i think i'm gonna rearrange this for sure there's a little too much going on it's kind of stressing me out i might shrink it a bit just because there's so much empty space okay so i tidied it up a bit almost all the money's gone i don't know a dang thing about roofing i might fix that later on but i did move the stairs inside just to shrink the it a bit melissa and george's room is here this just leads to like a big space where i have all the kids 
sleeping. This is no longer George's bed. I'll just move John's there and then we'll have Margaret over here. I'll move the loom over here and then the hamper. Okay. And then I did most of the work down here. So I just added a little, I just closed this part off, added some seating here. I added a lot of clutter just to make it look more lived in. Uh, we've got the table here and then I've added this stove. I haven't used this. Uh, I'm pretty sure it works just fine, but we'll check it out. Here are the counters. I might add a few more uh, a little later on. And uh, it's it's mostly just clutter. I just wanted it to look super cozy and lived in. And then I, I extended the entrance here, gave them more of a foyer. And yeah, so it's, it's not enormous, but I did want to give them more space. I might make this into the skill building room when Matilda, why are you dressing that? When <laughs> James and Matilda pass away. Uh, they are technically elders now, quote unquote, but I haven't aged them up just yet. But for now, I've just got the newlyweds up here, the parents here, and yeah, so that's how it's looking. Um, pretty satisfied with it. You guys can let me know what you think. I'm gonna get rid of their fine clothing. I feel like that was just something that Beatrice let them borrow. And I'm gonna give Matilda some grays. I did uh, reblog the grays on my Simbler, so if you guys visit it, you'll see it. Uh, it's under accessories and piercings. And yeah, so there you go. You just add it right there. And I'll just add it to all her outfits. And we'll give James some more lines as well. Okay, so we, we gave him a forehead crease. James still has just aged like a fine wine. Uh, I won't make him super great, but I think I will go ahead and add that accessory just to gray him further. And they're varying like amounts and shades. Okay, so we got a few more grays. There's also, uh, I also reblog this on my Simbler. It's one for beards and it's under makeup and face paint, I believe. Yeah, it's this one, it's called graying hair. So you can add varying sort of shades of graying hair here and textures, I guess. So I'll, I'll do this one and just go through each and add those. Okay, there you go. The parents have aged a little more. The times have passed and we're getting fairly close to little James's birthday. It is a year away, but before that we do age up Aria and, and the twins and Cirilla. So we have that to look forward to, but yeah. So with all that done, I'm going to leave the Rolfs here for now. We'll find out if if Melissa is pregnant in the next episode. We will also move on uh, with Margaret and Leo, have them interact a bit. I'm going to introduce Gwen's potential spouse at Margaret's wedding. So you guys will see that. And then I'll have Talia and Pierre flirt a little bit more. Uh, Talia's still kind of young. She can't get married until like 1329 but it's nice having these sort of set up before the age of marriage because uh we did wait a little with george it's fine i'm sure it'll be fine and of course john will have his moment as well poor john who was mauled by a bear my my poor baby and he's been twitching a lot i wonder if that's from the bear and he's gonna be uh not so great for two days and in the next episode i'll have um margaret harvest these so so i'm gonna leave the rolfs here and we'll do a brief check-in with joan okay so i came back and they are in the exact same spot i feel like a lot of what i'm gonna do with the royals moving forward is just narrative i will do some gameplay obviously and maybe some machinimas in the future but just because i i don't want to since the family is growing. I don't want to spend too much time a away from the Rolfs. So a lot of like the royal drama, which will affect like everything else that's going on, is going to be like me discussing what's what they're talking about. But I do love the royal family, so I didn't want to like stop playing them, obviously. And a lot of this is very dramatic. A lot of this will affect the events of what will happen in the future, of course. So yeah, we're back in Willow Creek where Joan has spent a few months with 
her own like envoys from Windenburg supervising, uh, sending messages to Cassian with updates uh, while they try to negotiate the terms of with whatever peace they can negotiate. So they finally came to an agreement and a lot of this, it was Joan calming Laurent down because as we know, he has an attitude um, and he has a temper, but he does have a soft spot for his older sister. He is not going to give Cassian Glimmerbrook but he's agreeing to pull his army and stop the threat against Windenburg if Cassian comes and pays homage for Glimmerbrook. Currently in Windenburg, there is a bit of unrest among the nobles. They are not happy with the crap Cassian has been up to, especially families like the Capets who originate from Willow Creek, who've had a lot of their stuff taken from them. And so facing um, a lot of possible backlash with his own people. Cassian has sort of realized that he needs to back down and all of this is against what Josephine is advising but he's like listen if if I don't do something we're gonna have a war. My people are not happy about this. They're gonna hate me and I feel like on top of that with the relations between Esther and Cassian going on. I feel like Esther is under a lot more pressure, especially since Joffrey has just uh, been pissed about the whole situation since he is the heir to the Capet's title and all that. So Cassian really has no choice. Otherwise, if it doesn't lead to an all out war, it might lead to a revolution amongst the nobles. And with everything, with all of Josephine's advice and stuff. I'm sure Joffrey has heard some things through Esther and the nobles are starting to look at Josephine in an unfavorable light. They're like, who even is this lady? Many of them weren't around when the events of my machinima took place. So they don't, they don't know the whole story there. So Cassian said, fine, I'll sign this treaty, but I, I won't go personally. So Cassian has summoned Gavin on the other end of the world after all that correspondence and after the agreement that Joan informed him of. He's saying, I'm not gonna make my way over to Willow Creek. I need to be here, but I am going to go ahead and send my son in my place to give homage to Laurent for Glimmerbrook. Uh, so in that effect, the land in Glimmerbrook would belong to Gavin, but you know, it, it's not, it doesn't belong to Windenburg, unfortunately. And Gavin's agreeing. I think he's excited to go see his mother. Thinking that Harwin is going to ensure the safe return, of his wife and son. Oh my God, Melissa's back there. He's gonna send Harwin with Gavin to Willow Creek as his guard with a letter to Joan saying, okay, once you have sealed the deal, I want you to come back, stat. So with that in mind, we're moving Crawford over. So Gavin is going to seal the deal, uh, negotiate peace so that Laurent can pull his army away from Windenburg and stop the threat and hopefully calm all the nobles in Windenburg down. Gavin is going to go ahead, do what he has to do and deliver that correspondence to his mother that his father wants them back in Winneburg as soon as the treaty has been agreed to. However, Joan is going to refuse now that she has her son there and now that Harwin is there. She is pretty much announcing that, that the problem isn't over, that there is still a threat in Winneburg in the form of a foreign invader named Josephine. So she is refusing to return to Windenburg. And now that she has the Windenburg heir here and the love of her life, she does not care. And with the treaty signed and with the people turning on Cassian, there is nothing he can really do about it. So that is where I'm going to end this for now. A lot has happened. George is married. We had some time with the Rolfs. It was great. And Joan is up to some shenanigans and she pulled one out from under Cassian. Joan is in her she-wolf of Willow Creek era. And obviously a lot of you history buffs caught this, but I, I am trying to do like parallels to what actually happened around this time. When history gives you such great content, you roll with it. Obviously this isn't a true to form accurate depiction of historical events but with where Joan and Cassian were going anyway it just made sense to give them that parallel it really it really did like it they laid it out for me and I said I'm just gonna roll with it so I'm gonna leave it here 
I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode. I had a lot of fun filming it and I'm having a lot of fun segueing into the next generation. But I'll see you guys for more at, in the next one. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye!